In just a moment, we will hear that amazing story that we call The Passion. We will invite you to remain seated. When Jesus hands over his spirit, we will kneel for a moment of quiet prayer. Congregation parts will be projected so you will not need to have your missalettes open to follow along. And to help us, we'll have images of, from various styles of art, hoping that perhaps some of them might open us up a little bit more to this incredible mystery, incredible story. So it's not just words for us. At the end, we'll have about 60 seconds of silence. There will be no homily afterwards. Instead, I'll offer a, a few words now in advance of the passion, just hoping it might help us hear it a little more. In the movie Good Will Hunting, a man named Will, played by Matt Damon, is a 20-year-old genius who works as a janitor at MIT. He was severely abused as a child, has been in trouble with the law ever since. To keep out of jail, he finally agrees to go to counseling and is assigned a therapist who is played by Robin Williams. The relationship was rocky, but Sean doesn't give up on this kid because he sees his potential. At one point, Sean offers this challenge to Will, speaking from the pain of his own heart, his own lived experience. He says, if I asked you about war, you'd probably throw Shakespeare at me. You know, once more into the breach, dear friends, he said, but you've never been near war. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap, watched him gasp his last breath, looking to you for help. If I'd asked you about love, you'd probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally, totally vulnerable, known someone who could level you with her eyes. And you wouldn't know what it is like to truly love her forever and to be there at her side through everything, including cancer. You wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in the hospital room for two months, holding her hand because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms visiting hours don't apply to you. And he says this, you don't know about real loss because that only occurs when you've loved something more than yourself. You don't know about real loss because that only occurs when you've loved something more than yourself. In just a moment, we will be given a stunning glimpse of God. And we will be reminded that that is exactly how God loves us. And in the proclamation of the passion, we will hear that there is nothing theoretical about this love. This is not an intellectual concept. It's not some romantic feeling. This is what love is, and this is what love does. And if, if we hear this story rightly, I don't think we could ever again think of God as aloof, as not getting us is not with us in the midst of our heartaches as well. For this is the story of the incredible love in the heart of God that only comes when you love something more than yourself. And now here we are, all these years later, this incredible story continues to unfold in our midst, one, that same ugly hatred that would lead him to the cross, rears its head among us. Two, that amazing love that shone through Jesus shines this day 
to the goodness and beauty of so many people. And three, that gut-wrenching letting go in the heart of Mary and the other disciples, it plays out today, right? In hospitals, cemeteries, all those places of love and letting go. All the pain that only comes when you've loved something more than yourself. You've seen it. I bet you've known it in here. The 85-year-old man who goes every day to visit his wife of 60 years in the memory care unit and just holds her hand, though she doesn't recognize him, sits with her, loves her, and leaves every day crying. The mom who each morning watches her child through the window, her child with special needs as he waits for the bus, ignored by the other kids. The countless stories of love and letting go and human goodness. Some years ago, I mean some 2,000 years ago, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ taught us anew what love is. It taught us anew of who God is. As mentioned, at the end, there'll be 60 seconds of silence. During that time, there might be something that you want to say to God. If so, please say it. Or maybe there's something that God would want to say to you. If so, please listen for it. For today we proclaim the very love of God alive in our midst, even now. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during, during the, festival, the festival, for fear, fear that, that there, there may be a riot, riot among, among the people. people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simeon, the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has, Why has there been, been a waste, waste of perfumed of oil? oil? It could, could have, been have been sold for more, more than, than 300 days, days wages and the money, and the money given, given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, the whole world will know what she has done. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests and handed him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money, when he looked for an opportunity to hand him off. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, 
And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen. I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go see my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servants, and cut his off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the synagogue, but you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. 
Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy. Prophecy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You, you too, too were with, with the, the Nazarene, Nazarene Jesus. Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This, this man, man is, is one, one of them. them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one, one of them, them for, for you, you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. What? Have you no answer? See how many things they have accused you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder and rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They all shouted the louder, Crucify, Crucify him. him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the, the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby 
Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to a place, to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, uh -huh. you, you who, would, who destroy would destroy the, the temple, temple and rebuild, and rebuild it, it in three, three days, days. Save, save yourself by coming, coming down, down from, from the, the cross. cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved, he saved others. others, he, he cannot, cannot save himself. himself. Let, Let the Christ, Christ the King, King of, of Israel, Israel, come, come down, down now from the cross, from the cross that we that may we see, see and believe. believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima salachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it and said, Look, Look he, he is, is calling, calling Elijah. Elijah. One of them ran and soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and Joseph, and Salam, Salome. These women had followed him from when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ.